So I decided to finally respond to the challenge Anthony Riley posted to me after I had made this video in which I criticized so-called flat earth proof regarding the view on the Isle of Man from Blackpool. In this video I mentioned that seeing the wind turbines as uh, they are shown is expected according to the globe earth model, but seeing the Isle of Man isn't. And I contributed this to the Kanegu effect, which was misunderstood by Anthony Riley. With the Kanegu effect I mean that, just like with the Kanegu mountains, basically all the flat earth evidence has an object that shouldn't be visible between the sun and the observer. That would be the uh, top scenario where the light is coming towards the observer passing the object. You basically never see the bottom scenario where the light is coming from behind the observer while the observer is looking at the object. Now why is that? Is that because the object then isn't visible? I am hypothesizing that the top scenario can lead to a superior mirage raising the image of the object where the bottom scenario most likely doesn't do that. Now, I've been looking at how to respond to Anthony's challenge. I'm not a scientist, so I won't be able to actually go into the science behind superior mirages, but we do know these happen. And I found some nice examples, uh, like these. So, uh, looking into this challenge, I realized that people in general don't look at this, uh, things like scale. Flat earthers in general say that the Earth can't be spinning at over a thousand miles per hour. But uh, with the size of the planet, that is only 0 0.000694444 rotations per minute. So you can go and sit on a merry-go-round and spin it at 0 0.000694444 rotations per minute or one rotation per day, and see if you fly off. The same goes for seeing things like um, uh, things behind the horizon, like the Isle of Man. Flat earthers always claim missing curvature uh, in an amount of feet, like, ooh, there's over 400 feet of missing curvature. Well, no, there isn't. If I assume a superior mirage, there would be a change in view angle due to the size of the planet and the distances between the object and the observer, the angles are very, very shallow. Now, Anthony made some footage from the beach of St. Bees, and from this footage I've taken two screenshots. Um, so, let's zoom in again. Um, the left are the hills at Ramsey, with Ramsey about here in the middle. And on the right are the cliffs at Bride. Now, in Google Earth I have taken some measurements, and the cliff at Bride are about 85 meters high. Um, based upon the measurements, I estimated that the cliff uh, at Bride and the hills at Ramsey each have about 40 meters uh, missing, so that's below the horizon, which is about 132 feet, or about 0 0.024855 miles. Now, according to the curvature calculator, 630 feet should be hidden, or 0 0.119 miles. So flat earthers would say there's still about 500 feet missing. But when you look at the angles over the distance between the observer and the object, those angles are next to nothing. I've converted all distances to miles and calculated the angles, which looks like this. Um, of course, this is not to scale. On scale, the differences wouldn't be visible. Uh, the orange distance uh, is the actual location of the cliffs at Bride, but they are below the horizon. A, uh, distance A to B is the horizon line. Um, so, with the measurements taken, you can see that a superior mirage would only have to lift the image of the Cliffs of Bride 0 0.45817 degrees. That's not even half a degree. So to lift this piece all the way to this piece would be less than half a degree in view angle. What you would need 
is the right conditions regarding air temperature, air density, air pressure, and the right amount of humidity. As we all know, water distorts light. If there's more water in the air, the light gets distorted more. So, in the original video I criticized, um, the distance between Blackpool and the wind turbines is relatively short. The image of the wind turbines was what is expected on the Globe Earth model. With the short distance, there's less influence than over a large distance. The distance between Blackpool and the Isle of Man is a lot greater. So there's a lot more influence of air and water temperatures and humidity of the air, making a superior mirage a lot more plausible. The same would go from St. Bees to the Isle of Man. So over 32 miles, the Isle of Man only needs to be raised uh, about 0 0.45 degrees. And knowing superior mirages happen, and knowing that over 32 miles there's only water between St. Bees and the Isle of Man, there's enough surface area uh, between the observer and the object where temperature, pressure, and humidity differences can occur to cause a superior mirage. That raises the image of the Isle of Man only half a degree. So apparently, it's all a matter of perspective. On the globe Earth, seeing the Isle of Man over the horizon over 32 miles is possible. Thanks for watching.